and welcome to another edition of Inside the Borough, the FAU podcast for and by fans. My name is Dan. I am joined by Jack and Shane as usual. And tonight we are going to break down FAU's triumphant uh, conquering, triumphant conquering of Conference USA East. FAU beat Southern Miss uh, this past Saturday, 34 to 17. Uh, that with, coupled with uh, Marshall losing to Charlotte last week. Uh, FAU has regained the Conference USA East crown and will be playing UAB, uh, University of Alabama, Birmingham next week, hosting the conference championship game. Um, that's kind of the, the, the biggest news uh, that we got. So tonight we're going to break down the game. Uh, we'll get into some of the coaching rumors because at this point it's kind of, uh, it's kind of all over the place uh, that uh, Lane – you know, there's some might be some jobs out there for Lane. So I think we have some, a few things to talk about. And then we will talk about UAB later on in the week. But um, I guess to, to kind of start off, uh, given our thoughts, my, the, the thing I, uh, I kept thinking about was we, we've talked about several times uh, this year is that it always seems like there's a new guy, somebody that steps up specifically on offense, you know, whether it's a wide receiver or Harrison Bryant or a running back, something, something that happens. Um, that, that really kind of kind of stands out and, and really yesterday um, that was the defense the the defense as a whole uh, just w- without the defense that is uh, with how without how well the defense played that game was a whole lot more um, uh, would have been a, a whole lot more uh, frustrating um, and certainly a, a closer game the the defense really just stepped up and it was you know, Chris had, you know, a rough game offense totaled, I think, a total of 300 yards, which has got to be um, one of the lowest, if not the lowest this year. Um, so it, it was, you know, again, it, it kind of showed that we are a very deep team and uh, w- was good to see us take care of business because we needed to beat Southern Miss since Marshall did end up beating FIU in overtime. So we had to win. Uh, we had to go out and win the CS- CUSA East. Um, by beating Southern Miss, and I think that's that's kind of the best way to go. So, um, and the and the best way to do it. So, um, yeah, that's kind of uh, what I thought. Shane, what was your um, you know, what, what what are your thoughts about this Saturday's game? Uh, yeah, Chris Chris Robinson only had eight completions. Um, again, we've talked about it this year. It's nice to see us be able to win a game where everything isn't clicking. Uh, four turnovers was the story. Uh, the same names as we see every week. Uh, Keith Leroy had sack, forced fumble, two interceptions. Uh, two of the turnovers were uh, set us up in the opponent's red zone. The kid is just everywhere. Migo Dotson, uh, the first interception was maybe the biggest one of the game. Uh, you know, c- completely, it was basically a 14 point swing at that point. Uh, you know, it, it was. I think it was a little tough, but I kind of predicted this uh, on last week's podcast. In, USM does as a front seven. They were able to get some pressure on Chris, uh, and not having all our running backs. Malcolm Davidson didn't look like he had the same explosion yesterday. Uh, I think towards the end of the game, BJ Emmons started showing some things off uh, that made you realize, you know, that he's he's an Alabama running back. Uh, yeah. You know, one particular move he had, I believe, on a third and three play. I think it was the play before that last Harrison Bryant touchdown was some elite level stuff. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it's just it, it all kind of worked out for us this year. And the fact that we're hosting a Conference USA title game for the second time in three years is pretty amazing. Back in where, you know, the days of where this podcast started and uh, the when it was loss after loss. Um, heartbreaking loss. Now it's it's just kind of expected. Yesterday was uh, just kind of just did our business. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I'm right with you guys when when you all say that every single win has been someone different. And we, we've been talking about Chris Robinson. We've been talking about Harrison Bryant and their running backs. But today, or sorry, on Saturday, it was all the defense. Miko Dotson, new program record for interceptions. And remember, guys. He didn't even play the first few games of the year. Uh, Kiki Leroy, I mean, what else can you say about him? He, he plays with the heart of a lion. And how many times are we going to keep saying that about defenders with this Florida Atlantic program? Uh, they just love to play defense. And that's the kind of swagger 
that I always want an FAU defense to have. Uh, Chris, hey, he struggled, guys. It was bad. Eight of 19. That one interception he had, he threw it in front of like six different defenders. It was rough. But what else can you say about Harrison Bryant, y'all? Uh, three catches, three touchdowns. If he doesn't win the Mackey, I'm going to riot. I hope all of you guys join me. We'll get the pitchforks. We'll get him in bulk at Costco. Uh, we'll meet up at the Irishman, and we'll, we'll, we'll flip cards. It'll be a good time. But hopefully he'll, he'll just win the award to prevent us from all going to jail. Uh, kicking woes were, were really worrisome, guys. Even saw Aaron uh, Shahari come on and hit that last field goal. Uh, Matt Hayball didn't have his best day either, punting. He, he did enough. He got two yeah. out of his four punts inside the 20-yard line, which is really all you can think of. I mean, he didn't have any bombs like he's had in the past. Uh, but, I mean, guys, we won the East again. I can't believe it, especially after how much the offense in the passing game struggled. We're still East Division champions. <laughs> what, what a time to be alive, guys. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, again, so, so many of us, and, and, you know, for those of you that are listening to this show, have probably been um, OWL fans for a while. And uh, to, to two out of the past three years to have a chance to take the Conference Championship game, uh, it's, you know, it, it's expected, and, and it's, it's hard not to take it for granted. Um, and, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, that a, a little bit later. But, um yeah, it was – I thought it was interesting that even though Chris was struggling, um, and I guess, you know, again, Lane being, um, being a good coach, knew what was going to work. I thought with the, the passing game and Chris being somewhat off, um, we really didn't try Tronti at all. I mean, I know that we have set packages for, for him uh, to come in, and there must have been, uh, you know, obviously something in the scouting report uh, where they kind of felt that uh, there must have been something in the scouting report where Lane felt that uh, having Tronti wasn't going to be um, wasn't going to be as uh, advantageous, but I thought that was pretty interesting. With again, Chris really not not you know it, it, he got he kind of got back into um, holding on to the ball a little bit longer, which uh, you know happened at uh, with uh, the Martin. I, I just want to I want to d- debate that a little bit because I heard some people around me get mad about the holding on to the ball thing. There's three or four plays where. They are design plays where there's only one or two options to throw the ball. Okay, there was one like that in, in the red zone where it's it's kind of one of these design rollouts where if Southern Miss picks up on the play, there's no options for Chris. It's either hold on to the ball and hope someone comes open or throw it out of bounds. And I heard some people get frustrated. Why do you throw it out of bounds? And I, some people in the stands around me, and it's like you could see the design of the play that it was, it's kind of a one read thing. You know, if you want to get mad at Chris, get more mad at that interception. It's kind of the first one we've seen all year where it was, I, he to, I don't think, a bad he, decision. I think he completely missed the underneath linebacker and he threw it into middle of four guys. And again, Mitchell running open a bit um, there, but it's, it, it, it's tough with them sometimes. And, you know, again, we've talked about it and we didn't get much out of any of the receivers yesterday. Yeah. Um, we've talked about it and they started off and they played the middle of the season good, but Pico uh, Mitchell and they've really kind of fallen off the last few weeks. If we're going to nitpick here. Yeah. I mean, it yep. hasn't, there hasn't been one um, receiver that has done anything of note in what the past three games at least i mean um it's just kind of been harrison bryant running backs mix in uh d'angelo antoine uh and around something like that there really hasn't been um hasn't been much and well pico had a nice play uh in oh gee was that the second quarter guys um Right yeah. before one of Harrison Bryant's one, yeah, he, he had a nice, uh, nice route where he just blew blew by his his uh, his coverage man uh, on one on one coverage. But I mean, that was it. You know, he had the same amount of catches as as James Charles did. So think about that for a second. Uh, Antoine had two catches, but those were the little shovel passes, and everything else was the Harrison Bryant. By every everything else, I just mean it was three. So out of Chris's eight completions. Let's just subtract two because those shovel passes shouldn't count. He only had six 
completed passes, and half of those were to Harry B. That's, that's a bit alarming, especially going up against a really good UAB defense next week. Yeah, I, I, though I do think if the line came out, we kind of transitioned here into talking about UAB. Uh, as good as their defense is, and, I, and I'm wondering, I think Conference USA West is really weak. Um, you know, Spencer Brown, who's supposed to be all-conference running back, has just been banged up all year. Uh, but UAB's offense is not great. Um, this is a team that was that we talked about it last week was shut out essentially by Southern Miss with their only points coming on defense. Um, so yeah, I mean it, it's going to be the same typical game plan for FAU, kind of just force turnovers. It's what we've done all year. Uh, but even if they do get some stops for versus us. I don't see how they their defense can maintain it the whole game where their offense is be able to score enough. Yeah, I, I kind of um, uh, kind of brought that same point up on Twitter uh, yesterday, where somebody was um, I think it was CUSA report uh, put a little poll out there of how everybody was how everybody was feeling, and I, I think that um, FAU's defense will be able to just kind of smother UAB, especially. Um, especially if uh, Tyler Johnston, their starting quarterback for the past two years, is mm-hmm. able to go. Um, I, I just I, – I can't see them. because And also, FAU hasn't put – hasn't played on offense a back-to-back games where uh, the offense was ineffective. I mean, if I just take away, like, half of the mistakes, um, you know, uh, that we happened last year and FAU wins the game by 35, um, you know, because it, it, uh, – a field, extra field goal goes in where, you know, a little more successful on first downs, not getting a sack or, you know, not getting a holding call or something like that. The game's even more of a blowout than it was. Um, so, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't see. Really I, I also think there's um, – FEU has a streak of six straight games with 30 or more points, which is up there yeah. in the country. I, I forgot who's – the. No, I think it's either like Ohio State or Clemson. Someone's up there in the teens, and then there's kind of a second tier group that are all like five, six, seven, um, and FAU's up there. So it, it'd be, you know, we always seem a way to find a way to get to thirty points. So I'd be shocked if we're not there again. You know, if I if we get to thirty five this game, UAB has no chance, no chance. Um, yeah. So you know, I. I, I just talking to, you know, my buddy and he's been on the show, Eric Henry, today, and he thinks this day is going to be a little bit of a culmination for FAU. He expects FAU to win big. Um, and I, I think there's kind of transition to my next thought on here, Jack's thought on this, is I think this is just a day FAU fans really need to just enjoy, kind of live in the moment. Um, you know, I touched on it earlier from where you come from. Uh, you know, I made the post today about, Ask 10 of your friends to come to this game. Beg them, get your Gator friends, your FSU friends. You know, bring your ex-girlfriend if you have to. She doesn't have to sit next to you, but, um, you know, just do it. Get people out there. Put on a good showing for these players. Yeah, Shane. Uh, yeah, you call my exes. I'll call your exes, and we'll, we'll, we'll get it done that <laughs> way. How about that? Um, I'm right there with you, man. I mean, we, we talked about it earlier, and we even mentioned it on the Nest on, on that thread about Arkansas, and we're going to go into that, guys. Um, just enjoy it. Whether this is it with Lane Kiffin or whether he dies here, just enjoy the fact that we are in the center of mid-major football right now playing for our second championship, conference championship, at home in three years. You know what I would have done to have this kind of opportunity uh, if, if the, I feel like everyone that's been an FAU fan for as long as we've been would do a lot of things to be in this position right now. Uh, Lane Kiffin, only he knows what's on his mind, what he's going to do. Let's just enjoy it while we have it. Uh, and let's just enjoy being East Division champions. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, like I said earlier, it's, it's tough to not take it for granted. Um, but uh, it's it's certainly something that we uh, we we need to enjoy. And I, I thought last game, you know, you, Shane, you mentioned uh, inviting people. FAU did a a good job as far as trying to get people to go to the game. Um, 
you know, I'm sure everybody saw that Mark from its owl time had a ton of tickets. I mean, Jack uh, posted on Twitter and Instagram that there were tickets available. I know there were a couple other community groups that had tickets. I mean, FAU was literally giving tickets away. Um, but this is, you know, it, it's the game. Uh, it, it's been like this. Every, every school, um, including Power Fives, struggle with the game that comes after Thanksgiving. All of the students are gone. Um, some students, um, the, the classes are done for them. So they may not even, uh, they may not even come back to campus depending on, um, you know, what their class schedule is like. So uh, th th that was, it was kind of a bummer. You know, you, you got to see, see some really good seniors, some uh, really game changers uh, at FAU leave. And there really wasn't that many people in the stands for it, which is, uh, again, it's kind of a bummer. And I anticipate it's going to be somewhat similar. The tickets, uh, the tickets were on sale already. I think last year student tickets were free or they were five bucks or something like that. But uh, we'll hope, you know, hopefully FAU can, uh, can muster some attendance. I think the game's at one thirty, but not a, not a terrible time. Most likely it's going to be a good, we'll have some good weather. I think uh, there's supposed to be some uh, cold moving in uh, this week, but um yeah, that's it's certainly something to... Yeah, I, I think the student tickets are free. Uh, I'm 99% sure. If they're not, it's yeah. surprising to me. And also, just I mean, there's cheap tickets everywhere, but I just know for the tickets I buy season ticket-wise um, on the Hyundai deck, they're actually $10 cheaper individually this Conference USA championship game than if um, than I actually paid for them season ticket-wise. So, <laughs> so there, there you go. Yeah, so it's a, a, like my season tickets was, you know, X amount per game. It's actually $10 cheaper for this one extra game than even what I paid for regular season games. So there's kind of no excuse um, right now. But, you know, it, you know, kind of – Before we fully pivot, guys – oh, I'm sorry. I just want, I just want to say, guys, this was the best homecoming – or uh, sorry, this is the best Thanksgiving attendance we've seen all year or all, all program history since the stadiums opened up. I, I just want to throw that out there real quick. By far, the best Thanksgiving weekend attendance we've had. Yeah, the home, the, the home side was great yesterday. If awesome people, yesterday. People I went to yesterday, and I don't know, Jack, can you hear the noise? I'm the only one who seems to be yes. yelling to myself down there. But, <laughs> you, you, um, you can up there, yeah. Yeah, but, like, no, I thought the home side attendance was great, and I said – and even kind of the end zones had a mixing of a couple hundred people in it. And I'm like, well, if we had a normal two to 3,000 students for this game, it probably it would, we would have considered it a nice attended game. I think the attendance was just under 14,000. So if we had our three, yeah, our, our normal two to 3,000 student, it would have been a 17, 18,000 attended game, which is a, for us a solid crowd. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, a dream this weekend i'm not a big attendance numbers guy is god it'd be really cool if we can get that near that 20 for this week's game i mean god you gotta think about it. there's not a single other team in the state playing you know um so right. it's it, you know so i mean again it's i think we talk about marketing and and commercials and buses and and telephone booth I'm joking you know telephone booth advertisements and newspapers and we discuss that on the forum all the time but like I think the greatest impact we could have marketing and this goes for any business or restaurant is just tell people about it bring people come on you know it, like I, I mentioned even bring that friend that went to the UCF game and had a miserable time because he couldn't get in and just be like I'll make it up to you I'll, but you know that's the only way it's this is gonna grow. Yeah. Um, but you know, we'll enjoy it. I, I think the only tough thing is this week is obviously and we'll talk about it, is you know, it's it was confirmed by Dan Wolken and I was tracking it earlier. Um college football co fans are were an insane people. Um, you know, tracking private jet flights that you know, there was uh Arkansas search group was in Boca for three hours today to talk to Lane Kiffin. Um does that mean he's gonna he's going to take the job. Does that mean he's the number one? Does that mean, it, it, you know, it, I think the only thing it does confirm is that Lane doesn't plan on staying here forever. As much as we want it, he could say no to this job, but you know, he could, I'm just wondering, he could easily shut this interview down. You know what I mean? Why go into this week with, 
nonstop rumors and, you know, recruits being left in the air. And I know that for a fact, I'm not going to send you a name, but recruits sitting here wondering, you know, we always have this in the coaching carousel. So it's, you know, it's, he's definitely interested in the Arkansas job. Yeah. And and it, go, go ahead, Jack. Finish well, I, I was, yeah, I was just going to say that the Arkansas staff, uh, I mean, they're not only going to be seeing Lane. They're kind of going on a little tour throughout this entire week. Yeah, Bill um, Clark as well, who we saw today. Yep. There was rumors that they were – that's part of their trip. So, um, you know, the, uh, the, the uh, press conference, I think, later this week with both coaches will be quite interesting. Uh, I think there's a media phone interview with both of them. So, Correct. <laughs> so, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see if it gets brought up. It's always weird – talking to coaches and when you kind of know that's kind of going on so for example we had our teleconference uh today sunday at five o'clock right after the plane took off from uh, boca regional airport and some of us knew i'm not going to say any names in the media but some of us knew uh that they're there we didn't have anything confirmed quite yet uh but it's always just awkward to say hey lane so how was uh you know what was the pitch for arkansas you know right after he talks about i really hope that we do well against a really good uab team um, it, it's just hard, hard to say, hard to bring up, especially for me as a fan first, because I don't want this to end. I, I, want, I want this to be every single year, uh, us fighting for championships with Lane Kiffin at the helm, firing memes at Twitter, uh, week in and week out. But we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, no matter what though, he's not going to USF. So if, if I saw <laughs> yeah. like, three people tweet that out, get I, out of here. because. No, USF has no facilities at all, and and he he's not going to wait all this time for the Schmidt Center to be built, uh, which is unbelievable, guys. I saw yeah. it yesterday. My God, it's going to compete at the highest of levels. To to go to a a place that that shares a practice field with a soccer team, okay, it's not going to happen. The um the jobs that are open. Uh, right as of, you know, sun, Sunday night when we were recording this. Obviously, Arkansas, everybody knows about that. Ole Miss uh, fired their head coach a couple hours ago, uh, and everybody knows about Florida State as well. South Carolina, I know we talked about that weeks ago. Uh, that w Will Muschamp looks like he's safe. He fired some coordinators and, you know, something like that. And, um, yeah, but I, I think the, the, the bigger thing uh, here is that Lane is he's, – he's interested. He's listening to what people have to say. Um, and again, it's not like we all, um, we all hope is that, you know, he's going to, you know, live on, live on his boats, uh, and enjoy, uh, fishing for the rest of his life and then go cut, go coach some games a couple times. I think he, he wants to, um, you know, to, to get back to, uh, the big leagues, uh, for sure. And, um, so I think we're really at this point, we're going to have to live with this as long as Lane coaches, or Lane Kiffin is our, is our coach. We're going to have to live with, um, you know, oh, Lane Kiffin here, Lane Kiffin here. Uh, the job, the, the right job that, that he wants could come up and he could say, Arkansas, I, I, I don't want it, you know, um, or, uh, you know, things just aren't quite right. He can't get, the uh, deal doesn't get done um, with any school. I'm not saying there's any, any deal with Arkansas, but it, it's something that we are kind of going to have to live with. Um, and I don't know, who knows, maybe, maybe we can do this thing where like we win a conference championship and then we go like, six and six or seven and five and then we win a conference championship so people are like oh lane kiffin's great oh well he didn't do that great and oh he's really great and then oh he, oh, he only won seven games um and uh yeah because i think had we won been in a conference championship last year uh the there would be more teams after lane but Agreed. we'll see definitely hey. um it's going to be um a, a, you know hopefully uh, a less frustrating week but it's just something we got to live with right now I think that's just life of a, of a G5 program. Remember when Arkansas State was at the top of the Sun Belt and they went through four different head coaches in four years? Uh, yeah. I, I'm, it, it doesn't matter if it's Lane. doesn't matter who it really is. It's just the life of a G5 coach for a G5 program nowadays. Uh, if he does go, we can take solace that we're building facilities to compete at the highest level. We mentioned this before. Uh, we're, we're trying to build a program where we can win no matter who's the coach. Uh, so it's, <laughs> again, I'm going to circle back here. Let's just enjoy it. Enjoy the memes while we can and live it up.
Yeah, and that, that um, the Smith Center is certainly going to help uh, as far as uh, making us a, a type of place that's, that's going to have sustainable success. It's, it's going to be the best facility in the state of Florida. I, I said it. Boom. It's controversial, but guys, it is a <laughs> joke. It is. The USF can't compete with it. Florida State cannot compete with it right yeah, now. Yeah, I, 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 well, Florida's opened a new facility, but we don't have to get into that. I, I think with this facility, and I was stating at kind of halftime yesterday, looking out at it as the sun was setting. It was a gorgeous day yesterday. And, and I said it last week, FAU is definitely a top 10, arguably a top five G5 job. And, yeah. and again, I said it on the show, let's the, get to the point where the program is bigger than the head coach, where there's just too much good things around the program where a coach needs to come here and just coach football and recruit well. And just, it, it's just going to happen and win games. You see this at App State, you see this at other G5 programs, you know, Memphis, is about to play, um, you know, if they win this week, they're probably going to play in the New York, New York, uh, New York six bowl. Um, and they lost Fuentes a couple years ago. So, um, l- let's get to that point where it's, it's kind of just a well-oiled machine. And Norvell's probably gone after this year, their current head yeah. coach. And then Memphis will go through an adjustment period and they'll come back and they'll be, you know, uh, anywhere from eight to 10, 11, 12 win AAC team. Like they, like they always are. It's, you know, just be a model of consistency. We still beat them in the New Orleans bowl that one year though. So shout out to the OG, (laughs) OG teams right there. Yeah. It's always, uh, it's always good to to bring that up. Um, So yeah, like we said earlier, we're going to discuss UAB a little bit later on uh, this week and we will continue to, um, uh, continue to enjoy uh, FAU winning Conference USA East uh, and uh, UAB, which should be um, it should be a fun game, and we'll we'll dig a little bit deeper, um, dig a little bit deeper uh, into that. And a shout out to FAU basketball uh, who beat uh, UIC, which uh, I just learned stood for University of Illinois Chicago. Uh, I should have known that, but uh, a, th- a thrilling victory, seventy-one uh, to seventy. So Dusty, yes, sir, putting together a, a good squad there, and hopefully we'll. Um, uh, yeah, t- two straight up. wins. March. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Two straight wins. Uh, now above 500 again. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you guys this. It was a pretty massive low point after that massive choke job in Fort Myers against Florida Gulf Coast. I really yeah. ate my words because I, I said on the podcast, yeah, we should be able to blow these guys out and look what happened. Uh, but the team well, you were half right. to together. Yeah. You were half right. You blew them out for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little bit there. They just couldn't hold on. Um, but it's it's great to see. Hey, Jalen Ingram, he had his first double-digit game tonight in that win over UIC. Uh, since he tore his ACL last year. So he's finally getting his minutes back up. Uh, I mean, I'm saying that he should be the alpha dog on this team. It's just whether or not he can get over that mental hump of that torn ACL from last year. Uh, and looks like he's finally starting to get over that. So if, if he can really just take the team by charge, uh, be that leader on and off the court, then I think we'll, we'll be in good shape. Uh, I still think we're, we're good to finish mid-pack of the conference. Which is an improvement of last year. So, um, you yeah, know, just keep improving uh, every little bit that we can. So, um, yeah, we thank you for, for joining us uh, with our – uh, last regular season breakdown, um, and we are looking forward to talking about UAB later on this week, dig into the numbers there and, and kind of see how things go. And then who knows, maybe later on down the week, there'll be um, some more coaching news. We'll see what happens. But again, we thank you for joining us. Make sure you check out FAUAllisonest.com for the game week thread to relive the game uh, last Saturday and um, any of the coaching news we post there as well. Also check us out on Twitter at Inside the Borough there. And um, yeah, we thank you for joining us this week and we will see you guys later in the week. Go Owls.